Ladies and gentlemen, good day to you. My name is Nabi Reza Ahadi. I am reaching out to you from Bangkok, Thailand, uh, from King Mongkot Institute of Technology, Lakra Bank Business School. Uh, my topic today for this keynote is the impact and rise of non-fungible token NFTs in digital economy. I'm going to have a brief uh, summary on uh, the current impact of NFTs on its economy and the, the direction it's going to. Um, considering um, the digital economy, considering that um, um, there are over 7 billion people and uh, roughly around 5 billion of them, they are actually having uh, smartphones uh, or some uh, form of unique mobile. About uh, over 4 billion of them, they are actually have access to internet and there are nearly 4 billion who are using different platforms uh, for of social media from Instagram to Facebook to local and regional uh, platform that agrees, uh, exist in different parts of the world. Uh, one thing is uh, quite noticeable that um, technology have helped us evolve uh, for thousands of years. And the speed of this evolvement have, uh, have gone way, way faster for the past 100 years, and mainly thanks to the technology that is available to us. So the technology that uh, we have today have helped us into integrating our world into cloud computing system, have helped us to communicate a lot more effectively to our education system, have changed dramatically for the past, let's say nearly 50 years, mainly because of internet and later on um, uh, various types of template platform, social media, and also having access to a smart, and let's call them a smarter phones because they are getting a smarter and a smarter. And other gadgets as well, such as watch, such as smart jewelry, which are which is a new trend. And a lot of people are, uh, there are a lot of companies that are actually trying to sell jewelry with a technology. So if you can see that a technology have uh, kind of influenced all aspects of our life, so a large uh, portion of uh, people, whether they are male or female, they are uh, um, using technologies. Uh, the, the average age for people who are using, uh, like let's say internet and social media is uh, around 30. Um, uh, majority of them are from urban population. And uh, overall, it shows that uh, because of technology, there are a lot more interaction between people across the world. And um, because of all this interaction, uh, our digital economy have significantly expanded for the past, uh, let's say, five to 10 years. And with the rise of uh, cryptocurrency, we saw a lot of changes in the world, we saw that our economy is changing. The, the decentralized systems they offer have created numerous benefits, uh, you know, in terms of privacy, in terms of uh, being able um, to decentralize the control system over its financial um, uh, um, system. But the other factor is, um, as you know, one of the major privacy uh, pri uh, problems, I would say, we have in digital economy is that there are, there are millions of artists. There are tens of thousands of companies that their, com their products are being copied, their products, they cannot really sell their digital, um, they couldn't really sell their digital copies, uh, you know, in a decent price a lot of time, or, or games, their program used to be hacked and so forth. Uh, so uh, the technology, although it has helped us to build confidence, uh, provide connection and enable convenience, it has come also with its own complications, especially because it's uh, getting larger and larger by daily basis, if not you know, every moment, because there are more information uh, inbounding to the entire cloud computing system um, every second, basically. I mean, imagine, the amount of information and its circulation in the next couple of the coming decades. So uh, NFTs are very promising for people, for PC games, lover musics, uh, for artists who would want to be able to sell their or original work, whether it's a game, whether it's a software, whether 
it's a piece of art made by a graphic designer. NFT in, in, enables them to actually be able to buy and sell the right of its original copy. So what are the NFTs being used today? Uh, in many different places, including images, audios, uh, written content, you know, such as blog posts, tweet instruction. I remember uh, not long ago, the first tweet was sold over $2 million um, uh, because the, the owner of Twitter created an NFT for the first tweet. And there's also Metaverse, which uh, now, you know that like the company Facebook have also changed its name to uh, Metaverse and uh, the Metaverse is going to expand this 3D VR model of a digital life is expanding rapidly and people are actually surprising that they're actually buying and selling land there already. The land in virtual world, I mean, imagine that. Uh, the videos, including uh, movies, series, um, uh, shows, and there's also even IP addresses and domains and so forth, which can be bought or sold in terms of NFTs. So uh, as I mentioned before, copyright privacy is one of the most serious concerns confronting entertainment and many other industries. And it's very difficult to actually control and eliminate this plagiarism around it. But thanks to NFTs and blockchain network, the token uh, can be used to store the content, which should be sufficient to ensure that the entertainment business, the entertainment business keeps up uh, with the times. And furthermore, with the advancement of blockchain technology, uh, and uh, the permission created uh, on NFTs and so forth, uh, we can see that uh, blockchains are not just uh, the cryptocurrencies, their network, their, their, their technology uh, have, pro, have uh, numerous uh, you know, benefits, including for NFTs that uh, many programmers are e eager to learn more about blockchain technology and NFT solution because there are, there's a very large, there's a very high demand for NFT products because there are lots of um, <clears throat> um, virtual art products, lots of technologies out there, PC games, uh, music, and so forth, where people would want to sell its original formats to someone else with the right price. Because obviously, the person who created it has uh, spent numerous uh, <clears throat> amounts of energy uh, resources to create that. And thanks to NFT, it's now very much possible. One of the largest uh, industries that can benefit from NFTs are actually gaming. Uh, the gaming industry is uh, it's already over 160 billion and it's expected to be over 200 billion by 2023. So uh, lots of games can also benefit from the NFT uh, leverages. And uh, you know, like, um, like the most basic players have the ability to collect as many tokens as they can. As a result, they'll be prepared to invest in better instruments to improve their gaming abilities and also increase their earnings in a general result. But also because NFT now also provide not just to buy and sell game, but rather it's, it exists within the game because you could gain NFTs by playing certain games or certain mission in those games. And the other benefit it provides is that it provides a privacy and also security. So for example, call the collect medical records of their patient to track their health while bank require information from their customers. So these are some of the benefits that uh, you know, uh, industries are relying on technology and misinformation sometimes can be uh, very sensitive if they are being hacked. Uh, so a uh, token can store this individual uh, in information and allow for easy retrieval as well as secure storage. So here is an example of fungible and non-fungible token. As you can see, fungible, uh, fungible could be, uh, for example, purchasing a certain token, like, you know, um, like, like Litecoin, for example, non-fungible tokens, they, are, they come in the in form of uh, various um, uh, Arts and one thing that we have to understand is that, uh, for example, um, if you you know if you compare two Litecoin, if you have a Litecoin or any other token, uh, um, if they are from the same uh, coin, for example, Litecoin, 
if you have two or three, they're all the same, right? Because they have a market price and they are valued the same. But a non-fungible token, they are, they are not the same because they are a piece of art. They have their own entities, values, and that's how they can differentiate itself. That's why uh, non-fungible tokens are unique in comparison with other services in blockchain technology. Uh, will NFTs continue to gain uh, popularities? Most definitely they could. Uh, it is estimated like by 2023, uh, the amount to spend on blockchain solution is to reach over 15.9 billion, let's say almost 16 billion. So it means that there are a lot more people interested in investing in blockchain technology and its uh, relevant uh, uh, services and products including tokens and NFT is, not, not, uh, is definitely one of the one of those very interesting products in this trend uh, to gain value from. And uh, there are lots of benefits uh, that NFTs can provide, um, you know, beside for, you know, like let's say PC games or, or cloud musics and so forth. Um, many companies, they're trying to develop NFTs uh, and uh, trying to basically, uh, for example, sell their rights of certain softwares in terms of uh, NFTs as well. And the benefit of uh, NFT because it, it's a smart contract and it's uni unique entity is growing rapidly. So many industries are uh, trying to um, adopt uh, NFTs and trying to see how actually they can adopt NFTs into their industries. Uh, one of those interesting industries that I came across is actually gems and jewelry. I noticed that uh, certain artists are not taking picture of a very attractive, let's say diamonds, color diamonds, and they sell those uh, art, like art uh, um, pictures, images in terms of NFTs. And this was something interesting that recently has come across and there are a lot there, there is a lot of, uh, of potential and possibilities for an NFT so different industries are now examining how it can integrate and help and benefits them uh, with that uh, particular industry. Um, I hope you have uh, enjoyed my presentation and uh, I wish you all the best. If you have any question I will leave my email with the conference chair. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer any question you may have.